Hi there, and welcome back to Bullets for Bucks. So if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel so you can see more great content in the future. But for today, we're going to be going over cheap versus expensive camo clothing or hunting clothing. Now, we're going to touch on the cheap, the really low end, versus mid-grade versus high-end or expensive hunting clothing. So you've probably heard of brands like First Light versus your cheap generic real tree camo pants made out of cotton and sold at Walmart. What I got to say today is first and foremost, you do not need expensive camo hunting clothing to hunt. You don't. Okay, you can be successful, even very successful, with cheaper or even cheap hunting clothing. Okay, most of hunting success especially out west, comes down more to uh, knowledge of the area, techniques used, learning to read the wind, and being persistent. Persistence is probably the number one key to being successful year after year. But we'll still go over them because there is clothing and there is hunting clothing that can give you a little bit more of an edge maybe so you can stay in those woods longer and be more persistent and also can make you a whole lot more comfortable. And that's the biggest thing. It's gonna allow you to be a lot more comfortable in the woods and while you're out hunting. So first we'll go over this, uh, these Realtree cotton pants sold at places like Walmart. Now this is about as cheap as you can get uh, for hunting clothing. Biggest issues with something like this is it's made of cotton materials with a little bit synthetic. When this gets wet, it's going to stay wet a very long time. It's not going to retain its thermal properties or qualities and you're going to freeze. You're going to get very cold. It's not water resistant. It's not wind resistant. If you're going to buy hunting clothing, do not buy cotton pants, shirts, coats. Um, it's a waste of money. Basically, they're going to fade a lot faster than your synthetics or your merino wool blends. Um, they're also going to not repel the water or rain or wind at all. You're going to get very cold, be very uncomfortable, and it can actually be, actually be dangerous if you were to get wet and you're on the mountain in an emergency situation. If you have really good quality clothing, packing, camping clothing, you can wear that, okay? You might want to stay away from certain colors that uh, certain animals can detect easier than others, but you don't have to have camel clothing to hunt. Um, does it is it better? Yes. Is it a lot better when you're archery hunting and you're trying to get really in close to animals? Yes. It's it becomes a lot more important when you're trying to stalk within those within that 30 yard range. Uh, camel becomes a lot more valuable in a sense than if you're just 300 yards away and you're shooting a rifle at an animal. Camel doesn't play into it quite as much. So I would consider pants like these kind of your low end but not the lowest end pants you can buy. And these are probably the high end of what they sell at Walmart. So these would be considered the expensive or better pants at places like Walmart. Now I've used pants like this and I've taken tons of animals um, at 9,000 feet all the way down to 4,000 feet elevation in rain, wind, rain, snow, sleet, hail. And these pants have actually done really well in a lot of areas. Um, these are just made by Realtree also, but they're the expensive Real, Realtree pants. Now, where they're going to do so much better than these cheap cotton pants, and they're going to uh, excel, is these are very wind resistant. They are very water resistant. In fact, I found that these are almost waterproof in a lot of situations. And uh, they're very uh, breathable. Now, my biggest complaint with these cheap pants Okay, they weigh more, they make a little bit more noise than their more expensive versions sold by other companies. The pockets aren't zip, so stuff can fall out of them. And the mesh lining in these pockets on the cheaper $20 to $40 range pants usually fails really quickly. So after about two seasons, maybe one, you know, if you put keys or anything like that in your pockets, you're going to get holes. And that could be a, a big problem if you lose something on the mountain that you, was very important. Um, so other than that, though, these are, in my opinion, a good option. If you're starting, if you're a, uh, an eastern hunter or a hunter that 
sits in tree stands and you don't do a whole lot of, uh, of movement or having a little extra weight isn't a huge deal to you. You're not worried about those ounces when you're backpacking in because you're not going to be backpacking in. You're just going to be doing little hunts. Um, these are actually a really good option. You, you know, that I hate to say it, but the, the more expensive Walmart clothing, uh, hunting clothing, if you're just getting into hunting and you're not going to be mountain hunting in extreme elements where weight and uh, stuff like that is a huge issue. Really, these aren't a bad option. Let's move on to a little bit more expensive pants. So this is the First Light. So this this brand I would consider a, a expensive or a top tier brand, along with Sitka, Kuyu, um, and several other brands. The biggest difference you're gonna see here is that usually these are gonna be more packable. They're gonna pack down to a smaller size if you're backpacking. They're gonna be a little bit lighter. Um, and they're going to be usually a little bit quieter as well. Not always though. So this is a water resistant, wind resistant, um, very breathable. So another big difference between say these and these is that these are actually a little bit warmer. Um, it's not a direct apples to apples comparison here. These are a little bit different, but um, these are gonna be actually a little bit warmer and maybe a little bit more water resistant. However, um, they're going to not be as durable, they're not gonna be as light, and they're not gonna be as packable as these. These are extremely packable, extremely light, and the pockets in these, they are mesh, but they're a different type of mesh that's way more abrasion resistant and will not uh, fail on you in the field nearly as quickly as the cheaper pants. So, another thing is, is these pants can be used as a mid-layer, whereas these you wouldn't want to wear these as a mid layer. You layer you would sweat. So these are way more breathable than these, and that becomes really important when you're hiking a lot. If you're going to be hunting or you're hiking a ton um, in varying conditions, these are going to get you wet, and that dampness can really uh, make you cool down or put you at risk for hypothermia. These are going to keep you a lot drier because they're more breathable. Um, but like I said before, these are still um, really good pants for the price. What I'm going to tell you is that I firmly believe that you need to have a waterproof, windproof, breathable layer available to you. Okay, so as an outer shell or your outer layer, you really want that waterproof, windproof, breathable. You don't want wind resistant, water resistant um, outer. Because when those conditions get really bad, you want something you can throw on that's going to protect you and keep you dry. Because if you don't stay dry, you're going to get cold. When that temperature drops at night, that's going to put you at risk for hypothermia and being extremely uncomfortable. So, most important thing, have an outer, outer layer, and it doesn't have to be uh, Kuyu First Light or Sitka or something that expensive, you know, that costs three, four hundred bucks. You can find really good options by Game Hide and King's Camo and several other brands that are in that 80 to about $120 range for a jacket or pants that's gonna keep you 100% dry, windproof, waterproof, um, and it's gonna be breathable. Now, maybe those $300 versions of the same thing may be more breathable or a little more comfortable or a little bit more durable, but you don't really need those um, in the field in most conditions or most hunters aren't gonna need something quite like that. So, um, for my outer layer on my pants, I go with a King's Camo KRG waterproof, windproof, breathable layer. And these are extremely light, extremely packable, and they run about $80 to $90 online. Um, they're full zips down the side. So another important thing, if you want to have that uh, outer, basically rain-proof layer, is you might want to look for pants that have a full-length zipper down the side because usually what happens is, especially in the spring, if you're spring bear hunting, you're going to get uh, you know really heavy rain to total no rain an hour later. And then you might get really heavy rain and then no rain, and you might be hiking or, or moving in that and if you don't have a layer you can quickly take on and off without having to take your boots and all that off to get on and off. It can be really frustrating. Or your cheap rain gear is going to be really loud, really crunchy, really cracky. It's going to it's going to disturb a lot of animals. It's not going to be that great for still hunting uh, or uh, you know stalking an animal. But this in the eighty-five, like I said, one hundred twenty-dollar pant range or uh, jacket range is actually you can find some really quiet. I mean, for rain gear, these are extremely quiet. So, um, as an outer layer that's windproof, waterproof, and breathable, those are very quiet. And I'm very happy with those. You get the really cheap stuff, of course it's going to be louder, it's probably not going to be as breathable, and that can be a problem in the field. Um, I actually use a game hide jacket um, as my outermost layer, 
And yeah, Game Hide makes some cheap stuff, okay? They make some stuff that's low end and it's cheap and it's not that great. And this is one of their high end jackets. It, it was like $100 on sale or something like that, or 80, 80 to $100. And I've been extremely happy with it. I've used it for three years in extremely cold uh, conditions all the way up to, you know, 80 degree conditions. And as my outer for a windproof, waterproof, breathable layer, and it's been great. I mean, it's extremely quiet and it's, it's done just as good as a Gore-Tex jacket or something along those lines. Um, so you don't have to have a $400 jacket. As far as layers, I actually tend to go with a, a relatively affordable um, I don't want to say cheap, but affordable base layer, maybe merino wool or synthetic. I have both. Um, and then I, and I'm not talking a hundred dollars or $80 or even $60 for a pair of, of long johns. I'm talking 20, $30. Um, so not real expensive stuff. And I've been satisfied and had uh, very good experiences with it. Um, so I'll go with a, a base layer. Um, and then if it gets colder, uh, I'll be wearing a mid-layer and that could either be a puffy jacket or it could be just a, a high quality synthetic or a merino wool blend a hoodie and and then I will put on if it starts to rain say or if conditions get even worse I'll wear a waterproof breathable outer layer and so yeah I usually just wear three layers on the top in really cold conditions and I usually wear two layers at most on the bottom now there are exceptions I may wear um, a pair of long johns and then uh, something like the corrugate guide pant as a mid layer or a puffy pant and then wear a windproof breathable like layer like the KRG from King's camo um, as my outer layer but you can handle all conditions uh, with those la with that layering system um, also okay so when it comes to socks I say you know bring some midweight and some heavyweight wool socks um, I always go wool socks. In fact, I wear wool socks year round and a lot of people are like, oh, that's kind of crazy. I, that would be super uncomfortable. I love wool socks. I wear, and I use lightweight to midweight all year round. Doesn't matter what conditions, how hot it is. And I find it's very comfortable if you get a good quality wool sock. Um, of course I'll bring heavy weight and sometimes I will layer a midweight and then put a, a heavy weight over it if conditions are extremely bad. Um, but I very strongly advise, you know, buying some wool socks. You don't have to get the most expensive ones. Um, uh, Smart Wool makes really good socks, but they run about $20 a pair. Um, but there are companies, um, Wigwam makes some really good socks, and they're a little bit more affordable. So you just search around, find what you like. Um, but you look, want to look for a high wool content. You know, if you're looking at a pair, if you're looking at a pair of wool socks, and it says, you know, 10% wool or 20% wool, probably steer away from those, especially if you're going to be hunting in any kind of cold conditions, and go for the ones that are 80, 85% wool, somewhere around there, and they're going to keep you a lot warmer. But basically, at the end of the day, do you need hunting clothes to hunt? No. Do you need expensive hunting clothes to be successful or to hunt? No, you don't, okay? So if anybody tells you you need Sitka gear to be a successful hunter, they're, they're wrong, okay? There's, there's been tons of successful hunters wearing, uh, you know, coveralls and a plaid shirt for hundreds of years. So you don't need that. Will it keep you maybe more comfortable? Yes. Could it possibly uh, keep you from being put in a dangerous situation and getting too damp or wet? Yes. Could it uh, make you, could it allow you to stay longer in the field? Um, sometimes. So, do you need it? No. The most important things is make sure you have an outer layer that is waterproof, windproof, and breathable. Make sure you have a good base layer and some sort of mid layer that you can wear, and you should be fine to go. So anyway, that's it for now. Go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll catch back with you guys a little bit with more videos coming up.